wash with uh, sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride, and then we're going to uh, yield maximum elastic. Um, this is the general overview of the reaction. We're going to take our accidental uh, alcohol and then we're going to reflux in the presence of acetic acid and sulfuric acid for one hour. Uh, the mechanism of this reaction first, we form um, this sort of enolate uh, after protonation from the sulfuric acid. We'll end up with this uh, conjugate base of your sulfuric acid, but this is the important piece right here because now this carbon is uh, primed for a nucleophilic attack. So that's what the alcohol is going to do. It's going to attack here. It'll form this tetrahedral, tetrahedral intermediate. Um, next, what we need to do is make this not so good of a Levy group and make this a better Levy group. So what we're going to do is we're going to deprotonate this hydrogen with just a solvent molecule, just the alcohol. Um, and then in the next step, we'll protonate the other uh, OH group with that same uh, protonated solvent molecule. That'll yield this right here, so this is water, which is a good leaving group. So, next, all you have to do is kick in this lump pair to form a double bond. That'll get rid of the water. Then you'll have this protonated uh, carbonyl oxygen, which will just get deprotonated by um, just another solvent molecule or um, just any other base. It could be the conjugate base, your sulfuric acid, or water for this. Um, it'll probably be this since this is an alcohol and it's basic. Than the others. That'll give you your uh, isopentyl acetate and then a protonated uh, solvent molecule. And it's just important to note because this is a catalyzed reaction, um, having a protonated solvent molecule and this kind of conjugate base is basically equivalent to having just your solvent and your acid regenerated. So it's kind of that's kind of a, the way that the acid kind of gets regenerated. It's Finally, uh, to get our uh, product isolated, we're going to do a separatory funnel with sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride, and then followed by simple distillation to get the salt out. Hello, welcome to the Fisher Eastification Lab, which is called isopentyl acetate, or this is also called banana lab because this isopentyl acetate have a banana smell. So, welcome to the banana smell banana lab, and here we have our bin where our these are all important glassware we are going to use and here this is our reagent which is isopentyl alcohol, glacial acetic acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. Usually we don't use directly so that is why we have a small container or beaker where we transfer these reagents and then we use a, this dropper to transfer into your uh, measuring cylinder. So very important thing before any doing any experiment, we need all protective equipment, goggles, gloves, lab coat and right now we are using this uh, a face mask and your clothes and shoe must be closed uh, toe. So we are all set and we are keeping more than 6 feet uh, distance between each other. So let's start this lab. So here we have measured out 5.4 milliliters of the isopentyl alcohol. 8.5 milliliters of the glacial acetic acid and one milliliter of the concentrated sulfuric acid. So we're going to go ahead and uh, combine everything in this round bottom flask real quick. We already have two boiling stones in there. Those will be important once we start the reflux.
important to make sure you have your water whenever you reflux going in at the bottom and out at the top. This is to ensure that there's no air bubbles left in the uh, in the reflux, uh, or I'm sorry, in the condensing chamber. It won't completely fill up with water. So cold water is coming from the bottom. Yes. And then hot water is going from the top. So we'll go ahead and turn this on just barely. Yeah, now water is coming. Okay. We'll go ahead and turn this up to like six and wait for it to boil. Once it starts boiling, we'll start a timer for an hour and a half. So now you can see this uh, reaction has changed the color and it start refluxing. We just put this uh, thermometer inside so that we can see at what temperature it start refluxing. It's around 100 degrees Celsius. So now we will remove this thermometer and it will keep refluxing like this one. So from here we have to reflux one hour, one and a half hour around 110 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Celsius. So we will come back after one hour 